Good morning! It is the start of another vlog and it is my first day of Zumba. I'm very nervous. I have about 30 minutes um, before my class starts. I'm only still home because I'm about 11 minutes um, out, but like I hope that's with rush hour. I am like so nervous, but let's peep the fit for today. So I have a athletic onesie on and then I have an oversized Nike white sweatshirt. I love working out with oversized sweatshirts on because they just flow nicely and they just I don't know I love them I'm like pretty tired today so when I come back I'm just gonna probably take a nap wake up clean plan my videos for the week and then I have to go hang out with my best friend I have something to give to her and I just we gotta catch up we gotta you know talk about shit so um of course I am gonna finish well probably not finish we'll give you part two of the rest of the story today and then of course we just we got a lot of things to just to just you know go over it is like a rainy day today and I do not want to run late so for this morning we're gonna have a slim fast I love slim fast like it, I'm gonna tell you this right now I want slim fast to lose weight I I don't think those claims are necessarily true I just like the taste of it and it's a good protein um, supplement situation, but I do not want to run late. So I am gonna just grab a bar This is a nature valley sweet and Salty nut ball and I'm gonna take this with me. Um, I have a bag that I purchased Listen tax write-off tax write-off. Okay, this is gonna be my new workout bag from now on. It's so cute I believe it's Calvin Klein so I bought a smaller water bottle because I feel like I never ever drink my full Adidas water bottle in the gym, which I should, but I don't. And it's just unrealistic to be carrying that shit around. Um, I have all of my stuff, my little piece, because you know, freaking Apple removed the app of the, the audio jack. So I have my little piece. I have a little um thingy. So I, I'm pretty much I'm all packed. My keys is in here. I got my little ball. I should take a little snack with me for after the gym. But all I have is junk food. <laughs> so let us know it. So let us know it. I think this is all I have to take with me, really. So we're gonna wear my black Nikes, really. Probably gonna wear my Zumba jacket. Have y'all seen my Zumba jacket? It's so cute. It's gold. Probably show you guys later because I'm trying to head out the door now. So yeah. Oh, we'll see you guys later. Bye. First of all. It shit bougie. Like, way bougier than my home gym. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Shit, Mikaka. Shit. Why they got stairs in here? Which is why. Why do I have to go upstairs? This, 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 this thrive eye, bro. Like, Y'all, I can't even log into this computer. This is irritating me. And I got like three minutes. <laughs> I don't have time for those. which is shocking because I've had a headache all week ever since my cell started but I feel good oh, I want to go to sleep though I'm so tired I'm so happy I showered before I got to the gym I don't know what it is but like showering before I go to the gym always makes me feel better so now I got my class on Thursday I heard Thursday's pumped like the energy is like real serious I'm so happy people really enjoyed my class and they had really good energy like, it was 8 a.m. I didn't think anyone was going to show up. Like, but I had, like, 15 people. Maybe a little less than that. Maybe, like, 12, 10. 
But it was like, I had nothing to be nervous about. What I'm really nervous about is cleaning my house. My house looks crazy, y'all. Like, ugh, I'm so fucking tired. I just think I need to go back to sleep. I think I'm gonna take a really good nap. I just gotta eat some really good food. I don't know if I'm gonna buy food or what. I'm so tired. Let's go to my house. Oh, yeah. I'll check with y'all later though. Hey y'all, so I woke up from my nap. I ate some Haitian food right before my nap. And now I'm cleaning. I'm pretty much almost done. I have some things in the washer, like my pillows and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna head to my best friend's house. Have to head to my parents' house as well because I have to go give a good portion of the rent. Um, half of it is in my car. So yeah, we're just gonna be doing a little clean with me or whatever. Oh yeah, and if you guys love story times, shout outs to Simone. I love her, I've been watching her ever since the panoramic started. Amazing, so I'll be watching her as I clean. <music> be moppy time y'all already know we gotta boil the pine saw sometimes i use fabuloso but i honestly genuinely prefer pine saw comment down below what's better we gotta have a vote we gotta have a vote so it's practically done so we about to start so i can head on out i was supposed to be out a long time ago but it is what it is i had a five hour nap so i'm on 10. all right so we are done i'm headed out now let me turn off these lights. Wait, where is this light? I don't understand, there you go. Oh, turn on this light. I have a lot of trash to take out. Mind you, I am cleaning out my office, so don't be thinking I just have all this trash sitting in my house all the time. I have some things that I just have to put out. Luckily, tomorrow's trash day, so sadly, I can't open the door to put my shoes on, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, I didn't even grab my purse, Jesus Christ. There you go. Mm, grab my coach bag for today. I love this bag. Oh, coach iconic. I'm gonna wear my Ugg slippers today. Yo, I'm trying my hardest to slip in here. Like, <laughs> or should I wear my Adidas? I should wear my Crocs because like, I'm not really going anywhere. Maybe I should wear Crocs. Ugh. Like I'm really slipping in here. Thank God I'm little y'all. <laughs> I'm literally. Slithering more of my crocs to be honest. I'm not going nowhere, I'm going to collect rent, <laughs> throw some stuff out, chop it up, talk my shit. I ain't going nowhere. So, all right, I'm gonna take this trash out and be out. Hey, y'all. So, it is currently the next day. I didn't vlog me at Teach House because there was nothing to really vlog. We just sat down and talked. So I am supposed to be filming today. I'm actually changing my filming schedule and possibly maybe my upload schedule, but I don't think you guys are really gonna be seeing a difference. I don't know. I have a potential one, I wrote it all down and I'm also doing notes um, for some videos for this week. I'm actually supposed to be filming today, but I don't know if I'm gonna get to. I actually really wanna take a walk. <laughs> like, I wanna go outside, I wanna breathe some air, but I am making some food. I'm gonna make uh, some, uh, I picked this at Dollar Tree. It's like some Spanish rice. And then we have some pork chops. These were seasoned like a week ago. And then I refroze them. And we're going to put these on a high broil. I do want some vegetables, but I don't know. It depends on how I feel. Because I, I, I don't like to have dry rice. So we're probably going to make some 
Haitian sauce, as the moon blue like to call it. Some Creole sauce. <laughs> Yo, back when my family used to have a restaurant, they had a Haitian restaurant in PA, and they used to call like the sauce that all the Haitians like we 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 have the sauce all the time. We just call it sauce, but like I guess for the the white people in the area, they just call it Creole sauce. And I remember every time the white people would come in, they'd be like, "Can you put some Creole sauce on my rice?" And it used to be so cute. So now I'd just be like Creole sauce, and it's honestly just water, tomato paste, a whole bunch of seasoning, and then of course the flavor of the meat. Um, but I do want this to get some color and get some taste. I do not like to pan to your pork chops because I feel like unless they're breaded, they kind of just like get a little dry. That's just my personal opinion. So we're just going to broil this in the oven. So I have five pieces. I thought for whatever reason I only had four. So here's what it's looking like. Looking cute. Looking cute. We're boiling the water for the real. And, um, yeah, so, of course, we're going to finish this story because you guys are probably like, bitch, where's the story at? Relax! Okay? Shit. Y'all always rushing somebody. Y'all mad rude. Anyways. So, let's just put this down. So, now that we're chilling and, um, we're cooking food, we have some downtime. Part two. So, right where we left off or whatever. Um, like I was saying, my mom basically said she no longer wishes to sleep in the same room as my father anymore therefore basically all of the searching and stuff i've been doing for my parents apartments had been in vain mind you she's never disclosed this information to me she never said nothing about that so i'm thoroughly confused and thoroughly annoyed by the fact that she even has the nerve gall and audacity to even be telling me this right now because not only is it none of my business but if it were my business for me to care about you would have told me this before when i was like searching for the apartments a long time ago so i'm sitting here mad because now you're bringing something up that has nothing to do with anything that i knew about second now you're telling me that you don't want to leave my cousin who said he's going to move out anyway and you don't like him okay mind you by this point me and my mom um didn't really rock with my cousin and my mom really don't rock with my cousin like it's to the point where my mom calls my cousin the man literally she'd be like oh the man the dude she does not call him her nephew she doesn't even call him by name so the man said he's moving out the man said he don't want to be here no more the man said he's looking for an apartment and you're talking about oh we have to accommodate him wherever else we go it's not making sense to me it's not registering and at this point i'm getting very upset if you guys knew how many meetings, how many things I missed out on, how many lives I came late to or canceled, how many things I had to move around my life to find these apartments, to go to these apartments, how much money I've dipped out of my pocket for their moving expenses, all this extra shit, for you to be this fucking ridiculous is absurd. And again, like I said before, my mom has this whole dream of, oh, she's going to have this, this dream living room and da, da, da. And the reason she didn't have it is because the way my parents um, structured the last apartment my mom stayed in my old room, my dad stayed in their old room, and then my um, cousin lived in the living room, and they just put a door over it. So it was structured like a three-bedroom, but realistically, it was a two. So she couldn't have her living room, and she always was like, oh, I need him to move into your old room so I could have my living room. But my whole consensus is, listen, if you lived in the hood, if you live in the projects, listen, I'm with you. I've had rats, I've had roaches, I've had bed bugs. I know the deal. My parents had them and they were really, really bad. So my logic was why bring a whole bunch of new furniture in here if they're gonna be riddled with rats and roaches? Little did I know the reason that the rats and roaches were so bad at that apartment was mainly because my parents, I hate to say it and I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm not even like coming at a place of anger at this point because I'm kind of over the whole situation. I might get re mad again, but my parents did not take care of that apartment. It was disgusting. My dad is really solid. He refuses to clean in a general sense, but my mom was not cleaning at all. Um, neither was my cousin in terms of the whole spot. He was only cleaning his own room. So his room was the only spot that was legitimately clean. Everything else was legitimately disgusting and disturbing, and it was bad. Like, I'm talking about, like, rats eating through clothes. I'm talking about roaches in microwaves. Like, it was bad. And mind you, I don't live there no more. And when I was living there, it was not that bad. So I'm going to get into that a little bit later. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, you know, we can get it when we move, not thinking that the move is going to take two years. Now, if you guys did not watch part one, I already explained it. When it comes to Elizabeth and you're looking for an apartment in Elizabeth, 
you genuinely have to walk around with your papers in hand because literally the apartment's gonna be gone by the time you turn around. So not only did I have to find an apartment in their budget, I had to find an apartment that accommodates three people. I had to find an apartment that was near the shopping plazas. Like my parents had a whole bunch of wants and needs that not only they could not afford, but were ridiculously unreasonable. And I wanted them to get out of the hood, okay? Not only did one of my friends get shot like directly across the street, people would die sometimes occasionally it wasn't as bad as it was growing up but it was still ridiculous that one of my friends got shot across the street then it got to a point where I really got annoyed because there was a time where my mom kept calling me and she said like thugs were like walking around trying to rob her when she was walking to work and like she had to be escorted by cops like cops would literally roll next to her when she walked to the train station because my parents walked like my mom probably lived very very close like my parents lived very close to the train station maybe like maybe i would say maybe like a five minute walk and even the bus stops they were like really really close so my mom would probably be out the house at like 6 a.m and it would still be dark sometimes when the time would change and she'd be like yeah there's like dudes following me everywhere i go they go and then you know they would only leave when the cops pulled up so i guess the cops caught wind of when my mom would leave and caught wind that these thugs were following her and they started you know watching over her thank god to those cops because that's mad scary like and that was like really my last straw and i'm like i don't understand why y'all want to live in the fucking hood so bad like all of these ridiculous things keep happening all of these like you want to live in filth the apartment is filthy honestly partly due to your fault but the entire building is infested they do not want to make any renovations like why are we still here like it, it was just very annoying of course there was other things that i've talked about before in other videos i'm going to link those down below so it was just very taxing and very stressful and none of this should be my problem as parents as adults you should be able to handle at least some of this shit remotely by yourselves but my parents and a lot of caribbean parents have this whole idea of oh when your kids become old enough they start working they have their own shit they're supposed to be responsible for you they're supposed to be able to do things for you and they have to because they're indebted and it's the most toxic thing the most toxic mindset i've ever heard of and ever seen in my life it's problematic and i'm putting my foot down now because i'm not doing this bullshit anymore because this whole situation gets way worse so all of that happens and when she tells me, oh, I don't want to sleep with your father anymore, I'm like, what the hell do you think this is? You cannot afford a three-bedroom apartment. So when she's sitting here going back and forth with me, at this point, I start going off. Like, I start yelling. And I don't yell, y'all. I've, I've told y'all this before. Like, I don't yell. I speak loudly. And this is literally the loudest my tone will go. But I don't yell. Like, when you start having me talk like that, we got a problem. And just know I'm I'm no longer fucking with whatever it is that you're doing or saying. And if she was not my mother, guarantee you, she would have been cut off from that point on. So at this point, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking to. I don't even understand this bullshit that you're saying. But you're going to get what you're going to get. And what you're going to get is a two-bedroom apartment or a one-bedroom apartment. Because at this point, this man said he's leaving. And even if he doesn't leave in a lot of time that he said he's leaving or that we expect him to leave this man is 40 something years old he's going to have to get married and, and have his own life eventually i don't think he's gonna stay here forever and you guys are beefing so i would hope he doesn't try to stay here forever it doesn't make any logical sense for him to stay here forever like does he not know when he's not wanted like what kind of bullshit is this so i'm like not paying her no mind like to be honest with you i i'm really like just like from this point forward i was like since you wanted to waste my time for literally two years and now you're wasting my time with this phone call, I'm not looking for anything for you in T more. She's like, oh, well, if I'm going to have to live in a one bedroom apartment, I don't want to live anywhere else. I'm going to stay in this apartment infested with roaches and rats and bed bugs. They refuse to clean it to even make it look remotely decent. They refuse to renovate it in terms of the landlord. The landlord's already a piece of shit and an asshole. Let me just get into that for a little second. Every single time we ask them to make renovations, they send it like, oh, the, rent, the, the apartment's in such bad shape. You guys will probably have to leave in order for us to make renovations. We've been there for like 11 years. I completely understand that, but even basic shit like slapping paint on the walls they did that and they did a really horrible job like changing the floors they wanted to sit there and complain about that and then when the super would come to do these things he's like oh they don't pay me to do that oh they don't pay me to do that da -da -da -da. he's sitting there complaining with us and he's like nigga i do not write your paycheck and i really could care less you know so it's like why would you want to deal with people who treat you like you're less than a fucking human this is the shit that i don't understand black people hispanic people any minority watching this you have rights as a tenant and you have a right to leave when your rights are not being 
exercise. This is fucking ridiculous. So I was like, okay, you could stay there. I'm not looking for no more apartments. I'm not wasting my time because clearly you have no respect for my time. So I stopped looking for apartments. However, I did keep a connect with that last apartment that I talked about in the last video where I was going to apply. But then, you know, my cousin was sitting there like, oh, tell your mom, I don't want nothing to do with this shit. Yeah, 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 that shit, right? So I kept connect with them and I continuously called them and I was like, hey, do you have apartments? Do you have an apartment? I have to put the rice in the pot. And they were like, yeah, um, I have an apartment. Da, da, da. So I went to go look at it and it was a two bedroom, but it's one of those two bedrooms where it's kind of structured weird. So the way it's set up, basically what you have to do, like it's weird. It's like one of those things where like it was really, really big and then they kind of separated the space. And honestly, I didn't mind that because again, my cousin is probably going to move out eventually. He's always talking about marriage. He got multiple girlfriends on a regular basis. So I'm just thinking, okay, you're not gonna be here forever. Ooh. So I'm thinking you're not gonna be here forever. Like I would hope you're trying to get your own shit because like why the fuck are you even still here? Like that's my logic. So I'm like, you're not gonna be here forever. And it was like 1600, all utilities included. And it's in one of the best areas in Elizabeth to live in. So I need to understand why would you not take this opportunity, Ivana? Okay, so I took it. I literally gave the deposit the same day and um I, I signed the lease later on that week everything was being finalized right everything was good okay everything was great now let me just say this next part completely totally my fault and i'm taking full responsibility for it because i knew eventually it was gonna bite me in the ass right so when it came to splitting the rent this part's not my fault because my dad refuses to work all right my dad refuses to work and um ever since covid now you guys are like oh maybe you can't find a job bitch ever since covid started there's a lot of places that's out here looking for people to work because nobody want to go back to work because everybody think they're about to be an entrepreneur. Everybody think they're about to live off of unemployment. Everybody think they're about to live off the PPP loan that they done finesse. Therefore, there's plenty of jobs out here that's hiring all the time. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Plenty of jobs are hiring all the time. Okay? My dad chooses to go to Haiti, live la vida loca off of money that we don't know where he got it from, probably from gambling wins. And um, I keep telling my mom, I'm like, technically, you're playing two portions of the rent. And um, no matter where you move at this point, because you've been in an apartment for 11 years, when they first moved to that apartment, they were paying $800 rent. And because they were sitting there getting like eviction filings, not evicted, they weren't getting evicted, they were getting evicted filings. So this means like it would go forth in the court, but then they would pay it before it got to court. So that's all on her credit report. I'm like, you guys don't understand how like much the rent has gone up in 11 years. Like what you guys are looking for is anywhere minimum 15, max like 18 to 2000. So 16 with all utilities included is like a very good deal in this area, especially, you know, for the fact that it's three of you right now, split it three ways, it's perfect. Split it two, it's not amazing. But um, you're going to have to pay your husband's portion. I'm not about to sit here and make my cousin pay half because that's not necessarily his fault. And I would hope you, you know, encourage your husband to finally find a job because he just wants to sit around and act like we're taking care of him, like he's sick and dying or something like that. And like I said before, I think my dad just be acting some type of way. He be acting sick because he could go up, he could up and go to JFK by himself to go to Haiti. He could navigate Haiti all by himself. He could do all of these extra things by himself. But as soon as somebody says, get a job, ugh you're dying it don't make sense y'all like i'm telling y'all i'm like it, it's hard to explain but anybody who has anybody in their life that's like this understands where i'm coming from it just doesn't make sense it's like how is it that you're always feeling sick you're never feeling well as soon as it comes to responsibility okay like it, it it's very strange to me so i'm like you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna let it rock i'm gonna let it go because at the end of the day it's not my business, but at the same time, people have to learn how to gauge the consequences of their actions. You're sitting there and you you think it's okay to not say anything to your, your husband about not working and you're paying most of the bills. And um, she's sitting there like, oh, well, he's grown. Oh, he's a grown man. I shouldn't have to say anything to him. He does what he wants. I'm like, I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, you need to understand that him not working and him not doing anything and him not making an effort, if he claims he can't work, okay, go file for disability then. That's what, like, he needs to do something. He can't just sit here with no income. And then this is what really pissed me off. I found out this man, y'all. Let me tell y'all. Tell me why this man went to Haiti. Talk about some, oh, yeah. Um, oh, snap. 
my neighbor moved anyways um th- th- this man sat sat around he went to haiti told us oh i don't need to do anything i don't need to get a job i don't need to do this i don't need to do that because my wife and my kid take care of me he must be talking about my sister that he don't fuck with he must be talking about my sister who 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 take care of you? Who? See, this is shit I don't like. I have no problem taking care of somebody who's not able. I have no problem taking care of somebody who genuinely cannot, who is genuinely sick, who genuinely has an issue. But when you're literally an able-bodied adult and you're sitting here making joke of things, when you're sitting here, you're popping shit. Oh, my kid's going to take care of me. Oh, my wife's going to take care of me. That's that shit I don't like. That's that shit I don't like. This is sh- I'm like, wait. He, he, he went around saying, what, in Haiti? So I'm like, all right, bet. Since he want to do that, this is my last time paying that nigga phone bill. So I gave that nigga two months. I was like, I paid your bill for two months. And honestly, it was an accidental two months. It was going to be one. I pressed the, the add the card button twice on the, the SIM renewal. And it, it was like 70. I was like, what the hell? It's like 30 something. But it, I pressed it twice. It added up to 70 something with taxes. I was like, shit. So I told him, two months, I'm not paying your bill no more. Now he out here trying to find applications for jobs. You got to push people like that. People like that, you can't continuously keep doing things for them. My mom would sit there like, oh, we would go grocery shopping. She'd be like, oh, are you going to give him money so he can get, get his own groceries? People who want things in life, you know what they do? They get a job. People who want things in life, they go and get it with their own shit, not with other people's shit. This man, when he went to Haiti, he asked me to get him an Uber in the middle of the night. It was $200. He couldn't get on the plane because he didn't have a COVID test. Paid another $200 for him to come back. He came back and then he didn't have a phone because he gave his phone to someone in Haiti. Spent literally $600 in phone problems and phone fees and all of that shit to get him a new phone realistically two four six eight ten this man owes me over a thousand dollars but i i gave him the family discount technically he owes me 600 to be good in my graces he better not ask me for one red cent so now he be sitting there asking my mom for money for him and i'm like i'll be telling her like if you give him money that's on your own flourishing but do not give my money to him i will like no i will never give you shit because no like how dare you yeah like so my dad be out here trying to act like I'm going to do everything. I'm this, that, and the third. I refuse. He's a user. He's just always been like that. He owes lots of people money in the street. And now he's moved on to family. I mean, he's always had family that he owed to. That's why he moved on to strangers. But now he's trying to pass that on to me. And I personally don't have time for it. I'm not going to stand for it. I will really beef with the man. Like, I have no problem beef with nobody. I don't. I don't. Because people got to learn how to respect you. Okay, so if I got to be with you for a couple weeks to show you that you're going to respect me and treat me the way I need to be treated, so be it. Okay, so here's where my fault comes along. When my cousin first came from Haiti and he first started working, my parents told me I need to start charging him right now. You guys are like, why is this your responsibility? Welcome to Haitian life. This shit gets on my fucking nerves. I don't understand why I have to do everything. It, it really is irritating. But realistically, this is because um, if you guys are not aware, if you didn't watch my other videos, um, you got you're gonna have to probably watch other videos for context. My parents have a long history of not, not paying rent. We have a history of getting evicted, having eviction filings, not paying electricity, stuff like that. When I moved out, I took charge of my mom's finances, and she's usually been the main breadwinner in terms of making the most money. Therefore, when she, you know, cashes out her check or whatever the case may be, I take the money and then I take everyone else's money and then I pay the rent. So I've always had direct correspondence with the landlord ever since I moved out because clearly their reputation is shot, right? So this is why basically I'm in charge of everything at this point, right? So my cousin started working and I didn't think it was fair to necessarily give him an equal cut because I was like he just started working and I feel like he's not getting paid a lot. I guess I was having some sort of compassion. So the rent was $1,150, right? And um, at the time, my dad was working. So I split it $400 for him and I think $500 for my parents. So you guys are probably like, okay, so the extra money, extra money was for groceries, of course. But I never factored in utilities. My mom paid all utilities by herself. And you guys know it does get very cold in New Jersey. So after a couple of, you know, winters, my parents kept telling me like, yeah, you know, you should start charging him a little bit more because, you know, the, 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 the heat bill and stuff be high. Like I remember there was one time I consistently paid that gas bill. Okay, the heat bill, I paid it consistently. And it's still hiked up to $2,000. Like I said, it was necessarily my fault. Because I was like, you know what? I don't want to take money from the dude. So no one was paying for utilities except my mother. And the reason we chose to charge for food is because 
I have mentioned this before. I would come home. I would never get any food. So my mom was saying, you know, like they would eat a lot and she would never get any food. So it was like, yeah, it makes sense to charge for food. Because he would also have this thing where like he would have like massive like parties in the house. Like his friends would come over. He would take all the food. He would take food like from the house to go cook at other people's houses. And that's another thing my mom's having a problem with him right now. And now she's sitting here trying to catch him on a hidden camera. Or like she's sitting here controlling like, okay, I have three cow's feet and five pieces of chicken. Yo, she's really sitting here like controlling it. Like it's, it's a whole thing. So now it, it, it's just a whole lot of beef. So now my parents are like, you see, you should have charged him the full price. And I'm like, you know what? I'll give you that because maybe I should have equally split everything, like counting utilities. But you guys know that those things change, you know, through the winter and the summer, these things change. They're not always going to be, you know, the same price in the winter. It's going to be cheaper in the summer. And I was like, you know what? I just want to keep it at one set price. And I could have did that, too. But I was like, I just kept it at him giving 400, my parents giving five. But of course, since my mom was the one that um, I feel like my mom should be held responsible for my dad working not working because she's never said anything to him she's never brought it up to him she's like oh well he's grown he can make his own decisions i was like all right well you're gonna pay his portion of the rent and that's that no a lot of people probably think okay well why should she be held responsible not him trust me he's been held responsible but in terms of who's gonna pay the portion of the rent who, who else will pay it that um i feel like they shouldn't have to split that evenly because my cousin has nothing to do with their marital issues and the fact that my dad is incompetent and likes to think that people are supposed to take care of him so i've always kept his portion to be his portion so for this it's 1600 and i really thought that my dad was going to get a job clearly he still has not they've been moved in for about a month now and this thing that really annoys me because the day i was packing at their apartment like he literally got a whole like phone call it was like a guaranteed job but he did not follow up and clearly he doesn't have the job yet and this was a warehouse job he's used to working in warehouses now all of a sudden he's talking about oh he don't think he could work at warehouses anymore when he was very very adamant on going to this job when they were going to give him an on-spot job now he's like oh i want to work in a hotel i want to do laundry shift i want to this and it's like my mom's worked in the laundry industry since I was born, practically. So maybe over 26, 7 years, right? Laundry drugs in the hotel are actually pretty rigorous. They are not as easy as just taking out, you know, laundry and fluffing up some blankets. It's, it's, it's actually hard, legitimate work. I don't think it's as hard as, like, being in an assembly line in a warehouse, but it's still work. And it's like, it feels like he's just trying to get light work, which, I mean, he's getting older. So I understand that. I definitely understand that. But it's like you were so open to picking up that warehouse job and all of a sudden you don't want that job. And let me just also point out that downstairs in this new apartment, there is a staffing agency downstairs. My dad has worked with numerous staffing agencies in the past. So I don't want to hear nothing about, oh, some people don't like staffing agencies. Da, da, da. He's worked with staffing agencies in the past. I'm very sure these people know my father. And then if you don't like that one, there's one literally down the street. There's no excuse as to why this man does not have a job or some sort of income coming in. This shit is actually genuinely pissing me off because everyone is taking the financial brute of him not getting a damn job. It doesn't make any logical sense. Personally, I really, really wish that he would just get this job because it would have made life so much easier. We would have found an apartment faster. But since I'm talking about three adults with only two of them having income, they're like, okay, what's this guy do? You know how that works when you're applying for apartments. So... Now, at this point, it's getting to, you know, it's it's getting to crunch time. Everybody's starting to move. So I'm thinking I did a good thing. I'm like, yes, I finally got my parents to move. It's been two years, probably more since we've been talking about moving. I finally got them a good apartment. It's in a safe area. It's all utilities included. Like, my mom wanted. Like, I thought this would be great. Now, it is a little bit smaller than what they wanted. And I'm not going to lie, this was a lesson for me in terms of for them and for me. So the way the apartment is structured, it is kind of like the second bedroom is structured like a living room. If you guys are in North Jersey or in any other, ow, I just hit myself in the two. It didn't hit my diamond though. Nah, it's still there. If you live in any metropolitan type of area, you would know that there's a lot of apartments that are structured like this. Like if it has like an oversized living room, sometimes they will like block it off and make a bedroom or anything of the sort. So this is how this apartment is set up, right? And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I think it's fine because, again, my cousin's going to leave eventually. 
And I was like, you know what? It's going to be the same setup. Just like you didn't have a living room at the other spot, you're not going to have a living room really here. And realistically, he's not going to be here forever. When he leaves, you can move the living room into his room. And a lot of the apartments in this building are set up this way. So I told her that. She saw the apartment. Everybody was fine. I'm telling you, everybody saw the apartment. Everything was fine. And my mom also has a hoarding issue where she just likes to keep shit everywhere all the time. She likes to bring things back from the hotel that she works at. So she wanted to be able to hoard all her shit. Last, like, the last apartment had four closets. This one only had two. She's complaining about that. And I'm like, this is stuff that could be solved. There's under bed storage. There's, there's bins niggas could buy. Like, it's not that serious. Um, you're gonna go wherever I put you at this point. Because now... It's starting to annoy me. Like, it, it was just annoying. It's like everybody was on board, and all of a sudden, it's just like little complaints that just don't make sense. So now we get to the part that was really stressing me out, and this is where I literally started, like, getting real mad. So, niggas start packing, right? I go to my parents' house with all my boxes that I packed through, because I had over, like, maybe 30 boxes, because I've moved, like, 30 times. So I go over there, and my parents is looking at me like, oh, what are these boxes for? And I'm like, to move. The boxes are to move. We're moving. I don't understand. And they're like, oh, okay, you're going to put them in boxes. I'm like, what did you think? We're going to move with trash bags? No shade. If you move with trash bags, I guess. But I'm I'm not, I don't, I don't get it. Like, how about if you accidentally throw something out? Like, I just don't understand. Like, why would you move with trash bags? I mean, you get them in different colors to differentiate. I don't know. I just, I don't think that's feasible. And plus, I was hiring a moving company. So I was like, yeah, it just makes more sense. Boxes, they stack up on each other. You keep track of them, you can write on them. It makes more logical sense. So I'm starting to pack and I'm realizing not one soul is coming to help me. It's not my apartment. I haven't lived here since 2017, 18. Why is not one person helping me pack fucking shit? They're literally on their phones, watching TV, scrolling on WhatsApp. Not one body is helping me pack this stuff that's their stuff their stuff y'all like none of this is my stuff all my stuff is out i have a little things here and there but that's all garbage it's not being packed it's not being brought so i'm sitting here like so y'all not gonna help you're not gonna help me my mom's like oh, i'm tired i'm tired my dad fake sleeping and my cousin's just out on the streets so now I start getting real frustrated because not only am I not getting help, now I start getting to the nitty gritty of things and I realize how disgusting my parents are. Now, this may come off a little harsh to people. A lot of people may feel like, yeah, I should be washing my language and da-da-da. Understand, I love my parents to death. They are the homies, okay? And also understand, I said all of this to their face, in their face. And I continuously say this to them to this day. That house was disgusting. And there is no reason that anyone should be living under those conditions. And it's ridiculously problematic that you were willing to stay there for that long without the renovations and without it being somewhat clean. I told them this. I am not being like, this is one of those things where I just want to share this with you guys just in case you're going through any type of situation like me. If you feel like you're being manipulated, if you feel like people are taking advantage of you, if you feel like people are just literally not caring about you and your feelings, anything like that, this is what this video is for. I'm not making this video to just sit here and talk shit. That's not the point. But that apartment was nasty. And I had to go through all the nastiness, okay? The roaches, the rats, the this, the that. It was bad. You know? And I, I was packing for like literally like a week because we, like I think I paid the deposit like on the 20th. And we're moving like May 1st. So I didn't have that much time. This is 11 years worth of shit. A lot of the shit I seen when I was like fucking five. So I'm just like, why did you guys keep all this stuff? Half of this stuff doesn't fit. Half of this stuff, like it was just so bad. Like the infestation was so bad. There was literally like a family full of baby rats in one of the kitchen cabinets. And I was forced to throw out all of the um, storage containers that was in that cabinet. Because understand when you have rats and roaches, that stuff can make you sick. Okay, it's not even just, oh my god, that's dirty, oh my god, that's scary, oh, no, that's not what it's, it's about that, that stuff can make you sick. You should not have that stuff in your home, okay? If you are gonna have it, do your best to eradicate it, clean, you have to clean, 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 clean. You can't leave nothing for those things to come back to. And it's like, I don't know what it was. I'm beginning to think my parents were mentally ill or something, like they just... 
It's like they didn't see what they were living in. You know how they, is it the, the shadowy mirror effect? I forgot what it's called. There's like that effect where it's like you don't see what you live in because you don't really realize how bad it is. I think that's what it was. It's like, how do you guys not see how disgusting this is? Like, I was so stressed. Y'all, I don't think you understand the amount of stress I was. I was disgusted. I was stressed. Like, every single time I left that house, I feel like I had to get in the shower. Like, it was so bad. Like, all of the, like, baby baby rats, y'all. Baby rats. Like, just born. Like, they couldn't even walk. They couldn't even walk. And I would put the picture, but I'm not trying to gross y'all out. I'm not trying to gross y'all. It was bad. So I'm just sitting here like, it was so gross, y'all. It was so fucking gross. It was so fucking gross. Like, I, it, at that point, my psyche just, I guess it kind of brought me back to, like, living in that apartment and dealing with that stuff. And even that wasn't even the most of my worries, living there. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, yeah, uh-uh. It's just nasty. It's like, why would you live like that? Why would you want to live like that? How can you see that living like that is, is, is problematic? How can you not see how can you not see it? And I think that's what really pissed me off about it. So I'm sitting here. I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning. I'm packing. My mom only helped me with one day. And that was to pack her shit that was in my old room. My dad, I put him on dish duty. So any dishes that we decided to keep, he was washing it. And then eventually I put my cousin on cleaning duty. So, you know, any, clean, any room that was cleaned out, when the movers came, he was supposed to clean it. Keep all that shit in mind. My mom still had other shit in my parents' room where my dad was sleeping, and I asked her, hey, can you please come um, sort the shoes that you want to keep? She caught an attitude with me, talking about some, oh, she's tired, she want to go to sleep. I understand. She just came from work. She worked the eight-hour shift, but you were moving in, like, literally three days at this point, and I cannot get all of this done by myself. I did get it done practically all by myself with very minimal help, but, like, that was extremely, y'all, I'm getting so mad just thinking about it. That was extremely taxing. And it's not my fucking house. So it's like, get up, please. Like, I'm trying, I'm begging, I'm like, yo, can you please get up? Oh, I'm tired. And you know what tired people do? They go to sleep. They don't sit on their fucking phone scrolling on Facebook. She's sitting there watching movies on Facebook or whatever. I'm just like, are you dead ass right now? So at this point, I got, I, I got mad. And I was like, you know what, fuck it. I ended up leaving, like, maybe an hour or so after that. And I was like, I'm over this shit. Like, it was so many days where I was just like, I'm so over this shit. Like, I'm so over this shit. I'm so over this shit. Then when it came to, like, the glass and the dishes and stuff, she was like, oh, don't throw out my stuff. Da, da, da. I was like, you know, when people have things that they want to keep, especially in a move, they, they get up and they help. They don't just sit there and make vague requests. Like, this is not, like, I'm not a moving service, and if I was, I'd be charging you. Like, this doesn't make any logical sense. Like, you're sitting here, and you're talking all of this shit about what you want and what you don't want, and rah, 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 But, like, what you need to understand is that you're not doing anything. So you're kind of giving me free reign. So I'm throwing things out, basically. Like anything that looked like it was touched by a roach or touched by a rat, I had to throw out. And understand, if you have an infestation or anything like that in your house too, you have to do the same thing or else you're going to bring the rats and the roaches to your house. So electronics, rats and roaches and stuff like that, they like to hide in that stuff. You have to like shake it, air it out or something if you're going to keep it. If you have clothes that's been eaten up by rats, what the fuck are you going to do with it? Throw it out. Like, I didn't understand. Like, it was like they were trying to hold on to shit that just, it was so weird. It was like I was arguing with fucking kids. I'm just like, I'm so annoyed. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm hungry. Like, I think I ate fast food every single day of the week. By the time. Like, I, I don't think I, I had a home-cooked meal for like a long time while I was over there because it was just like I couldn't I couldn't sit down to focus I couldn't sit down to do anything it was just such an emotionally taxing physically taxing like situation and every single time I felt like I was done it was something else it was something else it was something else and it's like I was trying my hardest not to throw out everything and I didn't there was a lot of things I kept that I was like yeah I should just do that shit out and it's like by the time everything was done the movers came and I had to direct them like okay this is what's going in the garbage this is what's going in the truck all of a sudden, you know, my mom's like, oh, you know, we get, we're going to have to cook food for the week. And I'm like, this is moving day. And you want to cook while the movers are moving. Whatever. It made sense only because we weren't going to have the stove working. The past tenants in the other apartment had cut off the gas service. So we weren't going to have a stove. So she was like, oh, I'm going to cook food for the week. So she was cooking for like all day. Now, while the people start moving stuff, she decides she's going to start looking for her stuff while the people are moving stuff. If you guys have been moving before, whether you had movers or you had your friends help you, you know everything is everywhere. She's sitting there looking for her stuff. 
I bought her a tablet for Christmas. Now she wants to go look for the tablet. Oh my God, where's my tablet? Where's my tablet? I'm like, it's probably on the truck by now. And if it's not in the truck by now, it's probably in your purse in the corner because they already emptied that room. Oh, wow, well, I have to find my tablet. I was like, you're cooking. Why don't you go cook your food? Oh, wow, well, I have to go find my tablet. I have to find my tablet now. I'm like, why do you have to go find your tablet now when you're cooking? Go finish the food. No, I have to go find my tablet now. You're not going to tell me not to go find my tablet. I'm cooking. And I need to find my tablet now. Ma'am, what are you going to do with your tablet right now when you're cooking? Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm so confused. And mind you, I, this is how I'm talking. I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Like, why do you, mind you, this is all in Creole, by the way. I'm like, you do not need it. Oh, like, I have to go look for my stuff. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? You're cooking food. We're in the middle of a move. The movers are doing their job. Go finish what you're doing. Like, I I'm so fucking confused. Like, this shit, yo, when I'm telling you it was blowing me, y'all, it was blowing me. I'm like, you're sitting here telling me that you have to go look for your stuff. Like, what are you talking? You think these people gonna steal your shit, mind you? These people, let me just say... I will leave their information below. The best movers I've ever had. Y'all already know I'm always having a mover issue. These movers were amazing. These people, like, I will definitely hire them again. And I definitely highly, 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 highly suggest them. They're called BG Movers. I believe they're based in New York. Um, and they're, they're really good movers. They're really, really good. And on top of that, like, they were just really nice. They were really nice. They were very cooperative. They did everything we asked. And, like, uh-uh. Mm, all right, the rice is done they were super great so i'm sitting here like bro like just sit down like <laughs> go finish your stuff like i'm so confused i'm like why are you picking a fight when it doesn't need to be a fight and she's like oh i need to do this and i need to do that i'm like you need to sit down because i don't understand what the problem is like i'm so confused y'all when i'm telling you i'm so fucking confused i'm so fucking confused you're complaining about something that's not that fucking serious and not only is it not that serious, but I'm not about to sit here and, and go back to back with you over something that isn't really a problem. Like, you're making it a problem. So now she starts screaming. I'm like, who are you yelling at? Y'all already know I don't do screaming. I don't do the back and forth. I don't. You're not going to yell at me. I am 27 years old. Nobody's yelling at me like that. Me. Ivana. Yell. Me. Nah, you're not doing it. So I'm just looking at her like, you're not yelling at me and we're not doing this right now because you're being very extra. Like what you're doing now is very extra and very unnecessary. I need to understand what you're upset about. Like I literally was like, what are you, but what are you mad at? Like, but what are you mad at? Um, You're starting to piss me off and da, da, da. I'm like, you know what's pissing me off? The fact that I packed all of this shit by myself. The fact that none of y'all helped me do anything, like barely compared to what I did. And the fact that now you're trying to cause problems on moving day for what? Go cook your food. Literally, that's exactly how I said it. I was like, go cook your food, period. So she goes, she starts cooking her food. Now the people come back up and they starting to empty out another room. Why my mom sitting there all the time she can't find her passport? Now these people are of like European descent, like Eastern European. Don't quote me on it, I don't remember. They're, they're from some European country. Oh, Georgia, there you go. They're from Georgia, the European country, right? What the hell do they want with a Haitian passport? Can someone please explain? What would they want with a Haitian passport? Because clearly my mom doesn't understand. Clearly my mom doesn't understand. She's sitting there, oh, I can't find my passport. These people must have took my passport. Da -da 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 -da. I'm like, ain't nobody take your dusty, crusty ass passport, man. I am so fucking mad, bro. And I'm just like, why are you sitting here causing problems? Like, just go fucking make your food. <laughs> Bruh, so now she really turned up. She's like, oh, these people, they took my shit. It was just, it was mad far. Da, da, da. I'm like, what would they want with a Haitian passport? I was like, and even if you're not going anywhere, my mom has like this innate fear of going to Haiti. Like she thinks if she goes to Haiti, she's going to be like kidnapped or something. Mind you, my dad was just there for like three months consecutively during COVID just fine but it's just like bro like she has this like irrational fear that something bad's gonna happen to her like you're not going anywhere by the time you try to go somewhere your shit's gonna be expired anyway like i'm not saying she shouldn't be concerned but it's like trying to accuse people of doing something that they didn't do because you're uncomfortable with the change that's exactly what it seemed like or whatever the fuck i don't know but it was just like irritating that's an attitude woman and i'm like 
get mad at me because I'm telling you the truth. Of course, you know, the truth hurts. That's what they say. The truth hurts. I get it. But, like, I'm not saying nothing to you that's wrong. You're sitting here and you're catching attitudes over bullshit, over dumb shit. Over a bunch of, like, it don't make sense. Pork chop good as hell, y'all. I'm supposed to be making sauce. Probably gonna put some potatoes in the sauce. So rock them. And then the problem with that is my tomato paste is frozen. So I'm probably gonna have to put this shit on the defrost cycle. I only need a little bit though. Let's see if it works. Never tried it. Point. I might blow some shit up. Defrost. Wait. I don't know. Three pounds. I only need like a tiny bit of it. Mmm. That shit was good. That's some good pork chop. It's seasoned, seasoned. Mmm. Now, I'm thinking like this some bowl. Now, just to remind you, before we moved, we ordered furniture. We had ordered my mama a furniture set. That shit was two thousand dollars. Real mahogany wood. Real um, like finishings. Like it was just a really nice bed set. It has a lot of storage. Like I'm talking about drawers on the bottom, drawers in the headset. Like it, it's a really nice bed and set. Two thousand dollars. What the hell? Now my dad gonna say, oh, so in this other apartment. I'm sorry if this fan is bothering y'all. Should I turn it off? Oh, damn. I hope it really wasn't bothering y'all that much. I really hope it wasn't. So, why is it, rapeseed oil, really good for y'all. Why is it that my dad was sitting there talking about, oh, so in the new apartment, that means I'm gonna have to sleep in the same bed as your mom? As you guys can see throughout the story, I started losing my goddamn patience, right? So I said, listen, last I checked, you were married. And if you didn't want to be married, you'd get a divorce. And last I checked, the adults tell me that when you're in a marriage, you compromise. So figure it out. Because I just spent $2,000 on a bed set. I get it, microwave. Oh, shit. It's under the okay. I was like, last I checked, married people compromise. So figure it out. Figure it out. I'm not I'm not doing this with y'all. I'm not doing this with y'all. I literally been telling my parents to get a divorce since I was like seven because I feel like their relationship is dysfunctional. I feel like they love each other, but they're not in love with each other. Okay, they're not in love with each other at all. And I talked about this on my Haitian channel before. Haitians have a dysfunctional relationship where they just stay together for children, family, appearances, and reputation. Toxic. It's toxic. It's a problem. So, my bitch ass, I was like, get a divorce or leave me alone. Like, I literally went off. I didn't say it like that, but I did say it the way I just explained it to you guys. I, I was like, get over it. Or, you know what? You can sleep in the tub. That's what I said to him. I was like, or you can sleep in the tub. He was like, I'd rather sleep in the tub. I said, okay. He was like, all your mom does is sit on the phone and watch Facebook videos and da da da. I was like, okay. And you don't like to clean and you don't like to put clothes in a hamper. And you're pretty much dirty, and you're probably the reason why this apartment looks like that. We all make sacrifices, don't we? So now, my mom want to pick a fight about the sacrifice that I set up for her. So like I said, the way that apartment was set up, um, I set it up upon thinking that my cousin is going to end up leaving one day. Now, I probably have to do a full-blown video about my cousin, because th that, that is an expose. That that's a that's that would probably be a two part video of why I don't like really bang with him like that. I I, I, I like I said I don't hate him anymore because I kind of understand him a little bit more, but he's problematic. So I'm banking on him leaving, so that the living room could move into there. Now she's sitting here picking a fight. Oh, I'm not living somewhere with a one bedroom. I'm not living somewhere that's less than two bedrooms. I'm not living somewhere that doesn't have a dedicated living room space. And I'm like, stay here. I don't understand what it was, but everybody wanted to pick a fight with me this day. As if I did not sit here and pack all of this shit for these people. I did not sit here and organize this whole move. I did not sit here and work my ass off for two years trying to find a place for you guys to live that is safer, cleaner, more efficient, with better management. I don't like an ungrateful ass motherfucker. I don't like three ungrateful ass motherfuckers. So I'm just saying like this, this, this like what? I'm so lost. The only person that seemed to be somewhat grateful was my cousin. So I'm like, you know what? I don't hate him. Oh, no, I get... Oh, that was short-lived. I'm getting into that. So I'm sitting here confused because I'm like, why is it now all of a sudden everybody got all this shit to say, but when niggas went to the apartment, nobody has shit to say? I don't care about what y'all got to say anymore. 
because at this point it's coming to a point where like y'all just don't know what y'all want and it's starting to affect my life and we're not going to do that anymore also keep in mind while i was looking for these apartments i started realizing again like i said it was easier to find these apartments on foot and i told my dad who had no job who would always be out in these streets doing his little gambling shit as well as my cousin and my mom who would literally be you know taking the bus and the trains or whatever when they would go to work like hey see if you could find apartments and whatever while you guys are out my dad specifically was like oh, it's too cold oh i don't have time to do that how you don't have time to do shit well you don't got a job please explain it to me so they didn't do their part. So for them to be sitting here complaining and having all this lip, having all this chat, talking all this shit like, oh, we don't like this, we don't like that. Bitch, you should have did your damn part. Everything starts going, everything starts going. So I'm thinking, you know, common sense, if your job is to clean, cousin, dearest, you're going to be cleaning here. You're going to be here, right? So now we have this whole situation of the boxes, right? My aunt had left boxes here to be shipped to Haiti. This is the thing that Haitians do. They put a whole bunch of things in boxes and then they send things to Haiti. It's so annoying, but whatever. Usually when people come here to do it, they send their boxes ahead of them so that no one has to be burdened with the task of finding someone and paying for it and all of that bullshit because that's the considerate thing to fucking do. Well, my cousin's mother did not do that. She left the boxes for us and um we were tasked with sending it and this is not how it's supposed to go everyone told her we are not dealing with your boxes we are not dealing with your mess but clearly she did not understand okay she did not understand what we meant when we said we're not dealing with your mess and she did the boxes anyway and she left them from what i understand and this is the shit that really pissed me off she gave the money she gave like a hundred dollars to my dad for the boxes from what we understood but never intended for it to be for the boxes she intended when my dad went to haiti for her to give that hundred dollars to her and expected her son to send the boxes when her son said straight up he will not be participating in anything that has anything to do with these boxes being sent to haiti i said i want nothing to do with it and my mom said she wanted nothing to do with it so I'm confused because my dad was the one I knew that had the money. So I'm thinking, okay, so my dad's back at it again, taking people's money for his own personal gain. But then my dad revealed the nefarious plan that my aunt had, which was to send the money to her and have her son send the, the boxes. I'm like, everybody's full of shit and everybody's a piece of shit. I'll be damned. I was like, if this lady thinks she's about to come to America and pull this stuff again, she's sadly mistaken because she will not. And as far as these boxes, I was like, you know what? I'll pay for it. And I was like, my dad better pay me back for it because you wanted to help her conceal the secret. Now, since you guys want to enable her horrible behavior, you're going to pay for it. She, he was like, okay, I'll pay you back. So now he owes me 120 on top of the six something. So that's 720. And mind you, this is just rounding it to the nearest least hundred because he technically owes me a thousand something and I lowered it. This doesn't make any fucking sense. Like when I'm telling you guys I'm mad, like I'm so mad because that box situation was an issue because the boxes had to be left in the apartment way after we moved out. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like what in the world is going on with these people that they just can't, they, they can't live in, in common sense and peace. Why do I always have to be in problems with these these people? Like why, why is this always an issue? So I'm getting like, really annoyed because the box situation is an issue because we can't move it it's really big like these haiti boxes are huge usually and we need to find somebody to send it that's going to be there by the time we move y'all tell me why the person comes for the boxes and my cousin starts to haggle the price the dude trade up leaves he don't want to haggle no prices it's a it's you don't haggle with these people haitian people they price is they price Especially when it comes to transporting goods, you don't haggle with those people. So now we can't find a transporter. It became a whole thing. Mind you, my cousin said he wanted nothing to do with the transport of these goods to Haiti. He still did it. Respect. Because I said straight up, it wouldn't be me. And I told my mom to tell my aunt. And I was like, I'll say it to your face too. If it was me, I'm like, y'all always talk shit about this dude. And honestly, I don't really like him like that. But that nigga not that bad. Because if it was me, I would have let them throw that shit out. Yeah, he's not that bad. Now y'all sitting there, say he does that in the third. At most, yeah, he goes out a lot. But he's doing his best to find somebody for these boxes. So let's get to where he fucked up and where he started pissing me off. So before the whole box thing went really, really left. Well, actually, this is kind of why, I, why everything's going on. The move is still going on at this point, right? Let's take it back to that. The move is still going on. 
and homeboy is like um not here he, he disappears now understand that um my cousin also has a gambling issue so my cousin and my dad have a gambling issue yeah clearly i got my work cattle up for me and um he likes to go out spend his money on gambling so i'm confused y'all you know why i'm confused because what's the job i gave you do you remember to sit and clean i'm looking around i said where's cousin where's cousin cousin not here that's some bullshit that's some bullshit i'm, I'm so confused because i can't find my cousin i'm like where where is he my mom was like oh that man went downstairs a long time ago i said what mind you now this is another reason i wanted to move downstairs is like a known gambling haitian spot my boyfriend could shut that down at any given time i don't know why he hasn't yet but that's um either here or there i'm just gonna shut up on that so i'm mad because i gave you one fucking job and the job was to clean i didn't ask you to pack i didn't actually all you gotta do is lay and you're not cleaning around furniture or anything all you gotta do is clean like my like clean that's all you gotta do my nigga and you went to go play games downstairs. You went to go gamble. So by the time the people were almost done, I was like, you know what? Maybe he'll come back up. I'm just having hope. I'm putting my, my, I don't know, spirit into him. And I'm like, maybe he's going to pop up. Maybe he's not going to stay out for too long. Bro, I'm calling this man. He not picking up. My mom's talking shit, but the door's wide open so he could hear him in the um, hallway. And my mom's like, yup, yup, see? He's exactly where I said he would be out. He's downstairs because he finally had picked up and I heard mad noise. And by the time like he's coming up, like mind you, this place is like like literally right next door. So it's like if you like say you're downstairs and you're coming up, you could hear the hallway because like you'll be right there. So she heard my mom talking to you. He's like, oh, tell your mom she grown. Tell your mom she grown. And I'm like, oh, child, please don't start arguing in front of me because I don't got time for this goofy shit. So I, I, I at this point, I'm, I'm fuming because we're trying to leave. And now we have to wait because you decided to leave your post. Okay, everybody doing their job. Even my mom was fucking finally doing something. Okay, my dad was at the other apartment at this point. So I'm like... Everybody's doing a job and you sitting here playing games. Like, this is not time to be playing games. We moved. And what really made me more mad is because he was supposed to call out that day to help us all move. Yes, we had movers, but his shit wasn't even packed properly, bro. I told this nigga, put everything in a box. Put everything in a box so that when the movers come, they can just put everything in the damn truck. He didn't even do that. So the movers spent all this time putting his shit in boxes so they could put it in a truck. So I'm sitting here like, bro, you're working my nerves. So I'm like, yo, um why i don't get it why'd you go downstairs oh i was downstairs um trying to see if the guy for the boxes would come back it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie la, 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 la. it's a lie okay it's a bullface lie because we all know that nigga not coming back okay listen if you know anything about haitians when haitians get mad they get mad and they get mad for the rest of their life not only that i know he wasn't doing that trust me because then i'm like uh-huh so you didn't think to come back at all like you was just gonna stay down there oh well i was taking care of my business your business should be here with the family that is moving your business should be what i told you to do because this is a team effort and you have done nothing but throw out trash that's literally the only thing he's done this whole time for this move by the way throw out trash i actually do one fucking thing and you chose to go downstairs nigga you're damn near 40 why can't you follow fucking basic instruction well how did you know i didn't have other business to handle once i was talking about all i was like don't you ep yo off at this point i'm sure my blood pressure was skyrocketed i'm sure like i was so mad because like how dare you you had one job you're fucking up the vibe you're not here like everybody else is and then on top of that you 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 have the nerve the gall the audacity to back sass me talking about son uh well how you know i didn't have other business to handle i don't give a fuck what other business you had to handle. yo i literally was like this is exactly what i said every minute i said i don't give a shit what else you have to handle and i was screaming i, I literally i was screaming like, I lost my voice that day. I was like, I don't give a shit what else you had to handle. You're supposed to be here. And you have the nerve, the gall, to be out here talking about something. Oh, I had other shit to handle. Your shit should be here. Yo, I started going off. Like, I started going off. And he was, and he, he low-key was about to start laughing. And he saw I was serious. I was like, I'm tired of y'all. Y'all don't think I'm tired? You don't think I have shit to handle? You don't think I have things to do? 
You don't think I like I don't understand. I've literally sat here, haven't filmed, haven't done any work, literally been taken off of work to help y'all. And not one of y'all has been fucking great. Yo, I started going off. I was like, not in front of the fucking movers in front of everybody. I was like, not one of y'all has been grateful. Everybody wants to talk about, oh, I got shit to do, I got shit to handle. Y'all can't take literally a day. A day to focus on one thing. I think the whole neighborhood heard me. And I was like, now clean this shit up. And I just walked away. And I sat in my car. I should have left their asses there to clean that shit, to be honest with you. But I didn't. This camera's gonna die. And I gotta finish this food. Of course. I'll be right back. Alright, so here is the food. As you guys can see, the tomato paste is in there. I'm actually using beef stock. I've never tried to make sauce with beef stock. We have the pork chops in there with some color. We have potatoes in there. I love me some potatoes. Very good for you. And the tomato paste is in there. It needs to break up still and I did season it. So we're just going to boil that probably for like a good 30 minutes until everything is cooked down, down. And yeah, so like I said, this camera is dying. So I'll be back. Okay, so I did charge this up a little bit and here's the food. I already kind of prepared my plate a little bit. Oh, look at that sauce. Hey, oh my God. This food took too long, took too long. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna finish the story later and then we're gonna probably end this vlog because I don't think I'm doing anything interesting. I really wanted to take a walk, but it's kind of chilly. And I do have to film. I don't really feel like it, but I, I, I should. I should just stay on schedule while I'm kind of behind schedule. We'll see. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Good morning. It is the next day. I kind of like got real lazy and um, it's time to film. I'm about a day behind my new schedule. So I used to film Mondays and Tuesdays, but I'm going to start filming Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's currently Wednesday. So I plan to shoot three and three since I have three channels now. So it's going to be two on my main channel two on my haitian channel and then two on the anna v more channel sometimes i'll probably do like extra uploads but i'm not necessarily sure yet um i'm just genuinely not in the mood though i'll tell you this like I, i'm not in the mood i kind of woke up feeling um annoyed <laughs> so i'm gonna just kind of like power through these videos thank god i do have a therapy session at 2 p.m. so it is telehealth um i'm gonna film three videos today then i'm gonna try to retain the information for tomorrow's videos and um film those tomorrow so i'm gonna be a little bit behind still i'm gonna be about a day behind but i'm not too concerned because my assistant is behind on editing these videos anyway and i don't want to overwhelm her um i'm just like uh Oh, annoyed because y'all like tell me why I just hit up my landlord well my parents landlord from the past apartment to ask for the security it's been a month and if you guys are not aware because you never had your own apartment you have like the landlord has about 30 days to um, return your deposit to you or they're supposed to notify you as to why they're not giving you your deposit back or especially if you live in New Jersey or in certain states you can sue for double I should have sued my past landlord. If you guys do not know about that situation, I'll probably link that down below because that's a whole debacle. I should have sued him because I could have got 4,000 as opposed to the 2,000 that he withheld from me. But anyhow, so realistically, this nigga, I called him. He told about some, oh, y'all moved out on the 5th and the rent is due the 1st. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? We moved out on the 1st. We moved out on the 1st. And I have the moving receipt from the movers to prove that we moved out on the first like sir don't fucking play with me and then he's like oh um when i bought the building um from the past landlord there was nothing that said that you guys ever paid a security deposit and i've already told you guys my dad had a long history of not paying rent so i'm like either that man cut him a deal and he didn't pay security or maybe he used the security as rent one time when he couldn't pay the rent because he wanted to gamble instead. So I'm just like, this is so fucking annoying. My dad's not picking up the phone. I had to hunt down the old landlord. The, the old landlord dropped on. He don't remember. And I'm just like, this is so fucking annoying. So now I gotta handle this shit. <sighs> I'm so fucking tired. I should have moved to Idaho so I didn't have to deal with any of this mess. Like, I really, like, it. it it's giving, I shouldn't have to deal with this because I'm a child and I need to live my best life. Like, at the end of the day, like, I'm not a child, right? Like, I'm 27. But I'm saying, like, I shouldn't have to deal with these things in terms of, like, this is not, <laughs> this 
This is not my fucking problem. They need to grow the fuck up. Like, I'm about to call my mom and ask her if she knows anything, but she doesn't. This is the thing. Even though my mom made most of the money, she chose to be oblivious to all of this because she tried to act like it didn't happen. Like, we all know people like that. Like, they know there's a train wreck happening, but they act like the train wreck isn't happening. That's my mom. So I know she's not going to know nothing. So it's just like, I'm just so frustrated because I got to deal with all of this shit. So I'm going to film and of course I'm going to finish the story, but clearly that's part of the story. Kind of jumped ahead there. So I'm going to film. Hopefully I come back within the same day. I am going to take a walk for sure today because I feel like I just need to get the fuck outside. Um, I'm kind of missing my, I'm missing my memory card. And then I got to like kind of do something with my face. I don't know. I'll put, I'll put some like lip, lip gloss on. I'll probably put some jewelry on. I just feel so dry. I feel so shish. I took the memory card and didn't put didn't put it in the camera. So this is what the office is looking like, by the way. It's looking less horrible, but I do want to get rid of this couch. Like literally the only thing that's staying is my YouTube corner for my Haitian channel. This is what it looks like. Um, this is definitely staying as well. Um, I'm trying to get rid of the chair. This is probably gonna stay too. Yeah, like basically everything is like going. Even this thing, I'm probably gonna put it in my master bedroom closet, I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna start hanging these because like having it like this is starting to like really bother me. Um, so like, yeah, a lot of things are, it's, it's, it's gonna be a makeover, bro. Um, yeah, mm. I can't really film in here really except for my Haitian videos because that's the only corner that really stayed intact. So we're gonna film, get it together, and yeah, I'm gonna check in with y'all later. Bye. All right, y'all. So I did finish. Ooh. All right, y'all. So I did finish filming. I am dressed because I decided I'm going to take up a Zumba class. I'm going to sub for it. Um, but I am going to upload these videos for my assistants real quick. And I am kind of getting a headache out of nowhere. Ugh, I just had my therapy session came to a couple revelations that I do have a very bad problem with doing things like all or nothing like I like to like if it's not done one way I don't get it done um so I have to work on that and I can benefit from some movement um if you guys are depressed or have like a lot of anxiety you can benefit from like going to the gym dancing walking if you didn't know that already now you know so about 3 15 class is at 5 45 um i have some things to do i do have to go cancel my la fitness membership because i get a free one for being a zumba instructor um i do just want to like walk around get some air and stuff like that but i want to upload these things for my assistants first um and um yeah just walk around do human things i don't know I'm tired of being cooked up in the house all right, y'all, so it's like 421, and um, here's the fit. We're nike out today. I said to wear joggers. It's so much easier to dance in joggers. I prefer to dance in joggers, and I just love this Nike, like, hoodie situation. Like, it's my favorite. I really want more. I got this on clearance, and I know original price of shit is mad expensive, but I would love to find another one. I've seen so many people with it, and I'm like, yo, I need to find this thing in other colors. So we are now headed out. We're gonna head to LA Fitness first. I'm gonna start driving at five. So I only have like 30 minutes, but luckily LA Fitness is like very close to my house, so I don't have to really um, go far. <sighs> it's a 30 minute drive, and of course you know traffic and things. I think I'm gonna wear my white Nikes today. Black Nikes, white Nikes, I'm gonna wear my white Nikes. But I'm actually gonna work in choreography as well. I'm not just gonna, um, in my class i just want to like dance today to make myself feel better right so we're in the car and um this 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 damn car is nasty i need to clean this i need to get my nails done my like thumb is like breaking it's like cracked y'all can't tell but it's cracked i'm probably gonna get it done tomorrow or whatever i do need to finish the story to end off this vlog turn up but yeah copyright we're not doing that <laughs> i need my coin I am gonna head to LA Fitness first, but I am gonna finish the story. Don't worry, y'all. 
Um, yeah, I just realized, yeah, I need, I need to clean this car. I don't know what's going on with me. You know, I lost part of my vlog kit. Like, there's, like, stuff that comes with this, like, camera. And I haven't seen it. I don't know if I left it at my man's house. Because that's the last time I saw it. I don't know if it fell on the car. But I can't find the stuff. Like, I keep looking around and I'm like, well, where is it? This shit was expensive as fuck. Like, I can't find any of it. So I'm going to try to find that once I'm, like, out of the car. And we're going to finish the story and we're going to end the vlog. Because it's getting it's getting long. It's getting long. Alrighty, so I decided that I was not going to do the Zoom anymore because the traffic was getting hectic. So I had to cancel that class, y'all. Like, no. They asked me to do the class last minute anyhow, so that's not my business. That's not even my class. <laughs> like, I was very confident I was going to be able to do it on time and beat her on time because I left my house mad early. It was only a 30-minute drive. 30 minutes turned to, like, 50. And then before I knew it, I was in the car for, like, an hour. So, it's over that. There is a Zumba class going on right now, so I could just hop in there. There's a lot of people in here. I've never been in LA Fitness or any gym past 2 p.m. I don't do nighttime classes, but I guess I'm gonna have to get used to it because one of my classes is a nighttime class. Part of me wants to just hop in here. Part of me really doesn't care. <laughs> Part of me should lift the weight because I haven't lifted weights in probably a month. Um, Part of me is just like, there's way too many people around here. So I'm just gonna walk around, see what's going on and see what I want to do because I can't go in there because I thought about like okay let me just do my choreo but I forgot that there's other classes at other times so I'm gonna have to do something to burn off this hour either I'm gonna have to do that class or just lift but even lifting is only gonna take me like 15 minutes that just annoyed me so annoyingly enough <laughs> like, I'm gonna have to find some bullshit to do in this damn gym and all of the shit that I want to do is take Nate that fucking cute. I can't stand it. This is why I don't come to the gym at this damn time. Because everybody's fucking here. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to fucking hop in that damn class whether I want to or not. <sighs> it's so weird because it's like I'm used to being here at a certain time and seeing the same specific people. And it's like, this is completely different people. So it's like, oh my god, this is so weird. I'm so strange seeing completely different people in here. <laughs> it's like, I feel like a new kid in class. So weird. But I love this camera because it's so discreet and people are not staring at me with like a big ass camera on a damn tripod. So, it is just too much going on here. Should give me anxiety. Let's walk back. <laughs> Let's walk back. Oh, now I know how people be feeling when they be like, oh my God, the gym gives me anxiety. Yeah, like if you're coming at like six o'clock in the afternoon, I get it. Damn, looks like I'm gonna be forced to take this Zumba class. <laughs> I gotta network though. I gotta network, so it looks like I'm gonna have to put on my Ivana charm. <laughs> Cause child, all of this shit that I be doing is taking. This is aggravating. Oh, all right, we're going in. classes back to back and now I'm working on choreography I know I'm crazy I'm tired it's about to be nine o'clock this is the latest I've ever been in the gym I do not even come to the gym at night but whew. I'm hungry <laughs> I'm hungry 
and I ate, thank God I ate before I came here because I'm not starving, but I'm hungry because clearly I've been working out. I probably burnt like a thousand calories. Two Zumba classes and I'm doing choreo, but I think I'm done. I just worked on reels. So, I'm supposed to work on another one, but ain't no way. It's already like nine o'clock at this point. So, I'm going to try to do something else during the week but i'm gonna try to film those two reels by the end of this week because it's just a one song it's going to be for haitian flag not even haitian flag day just haitian Her heritage month i'm gonna be doing a bunch of haitian based choreography so hopefully i could get that done but i'm tired i need some food <laughs> i don't know what i'm about to eat i'm hungry i'm starving i'm happy i got the choreography done because it was like short ass choreo y'all gonna see it i don't know if y'all gonna see it first i don't know what's gonna come out first the choreo or that um i have to put the outfit together for the choreo because it's supposed to be haitian based i was going for like haitian carnaval so like kind of like combat boots shorts and a tank top but like with a haitian flag hopefully i can find my really big haitian flag because i was banking on having it and i haven't seen that haitian flag in a really long time and I need to find a location. I'm thinking about doing it in the local park near me. I honestly wanted to do it in Warneco because there's a lot of greenery, but I'm like, there's plenty of parks near me. I, I shouldn't have to do all of that goofy shit. So since I do have a Zumba class tomorrow, it would make sense for me to film it tomorrow, but I don't have the outfit together and I'm hungry and I can't think straight. So I'm just going to do that. And of course, we're going to finish the story either tonight or tomorrow morning. Listen, y'all can wait. Y'all can wait. Good morning, y'all. So, it is the next day. Um, I do have my class tonight. I don't think anything is going to really happen. And I'm going to go film some reels. i got to start filming my Haitian reels. But I don't, I don't know. I might start a new vlog. I might not. I don't know. I already have two. And I haven't started editing either one of those, which is really bad. I have a broken nail now. To break your thumb is a lot. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what I was doing. <sighs> so I don't know where I was in the story. So I think I was talking about how we moved and everyone was complaining. Um, basically, okay, so I think I was with the boxes. So what had happened was with my whole aunt and her boxes situation, let me go try to find something to eat because I do need to go get my nails done. I want to get that done early. Um, a lot of nail places open 10, 11, and it's currently like 10, 45. So with my aunt's box situation, it was a mess, y'all, because... My aunt did not send the boxes ahead of herself, so we had to kind of figure it out. And if you guys know anything about moving, or you don't know, let me um, give you a quick little synopsis. When you move out in an apartment, you're supposed to give um, everything as soon as you move out or whatever it is that you agree upon with your landlord, which is usually like the same day. So you're supposed to give the keys back, whatever the case be, maybe usually it's like the 30th, the 31st or before the first, because the person, the landlord usually has to come in, clean the apartment, you know, do whatever it is. So it could be ready for the next renter. Now, these boxes were really, really heavy. Now, if you know anything about like the cargo situation with Haitians, it's usually a very heavy thing. Like it's heavy, heavy, like heavy like i'm talking about like these boxes are like maybe like 400 pounds like i'm like they're they're really heavy so like we were not i was like i'm not taking these to the next apartment like i don't give a fuck like whatever y'all do y'all better figure it out because we're not taking this to the next apartment because not only did niggas tell this lady not to do this shit but she tried to be slick and she tried to like bait and switch and, and get other people to send shit for her and i'm not with that like that's mad disrespectful like I, I didn't like the way she did that i was like do what y'all gotta do but if it was up to me i would have threw it out I, I i straight up said that and even though her son says she didn't want he didn't want to to do with it he a decent dude because he was sitting there trying to figure out how to get the dude to come back after he fumbled the situation anyway he was sitting there moving the boxes trying to get people to come get the boxes trying to get people to hold it and i was like yo this dude not that bad i was like you know what he a good person because I kid you not, if it was me, I would have thrown it out. I really don't care because people need to learn, including adults, because this is a thing that Caribbean people really make me mad. They think that just because they're adults, they can do what they want. Understand that y'all need to start respecting children, okay? You need to start respecting other human beings that are younger than you. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can just treat them 
and treat other people however you want to. And that's the problem I don't like I genuinely have with like grown women that I have with like older people. They think that oh well I'm an adult, I can do what I want, I can say what I want, I can treat people how I want. You have to do what I want because I'm an adult. No, that's not how this works. So she he's sitting there, he he's doing all of this. I'm stressed because I'm like, you know what? Realistically, since we still have that big ass box, well, it was two big ass boxes, honestly. Like, you know, since we have these big ass boxes in the apartment, they can be petty. They could just be like, yo, we're not gonna give you the security deposit back because you have these big ass boxes sitting in the apartment. That's how it goes. You still have property, um, depending on what state you live in, they could still be like, oh, you are occupying the apartment. Um, they can also just throw it out on the street. There's a lot of things that could happen. And eventually, I believe he moved one box. And then there was another box in there. He said one was out on the street. It was a lot. It was a lot going on. So I was just like, bro, this shit is so fucking annoying. The landlord's haggling me like, hey, when can you give the keys back? But we didn't want to give the keys. And then we didn't have access to the apartment. So it, it's just all of this shit going on. Every day, it's something new. I literally could not sleep right because every day it was something else meanwhile my parents are just being like ridiculously ungrateful and this is the thing i don't have a problem people not liking things or expressing their opinions i don't have a problem with that but i would appreciate that if someone's doing something for you okay if i'm doing something for you you could at least say thank you you could at least say please especially when it's something that you asked me to do i told you guys from you know day one they asked me hey can you help us move can you find these apartments then all of a sudden oh i want a three bedroom then all of a sudden oh we want to be in this specific area then all of a sudden i want this i want that and i'm trying to accommodate everything you need i get you everything you need and i'm not getting a thank you i'm not getting a like it's annoying it's the ungratefulness for me and it's like i'm just overwhelmed like i i really am and it's crazy because like when people look at me and when people watch me people interact with me they, they don't understand when i say i'm stressed when i say i'm tired because like i don't give that off and i think most people are like that you don't see it you know because i mean i'm not about to go around moping around mad all the time i got shit to do but beneath the surface i am very thoroughly annoyed on a regular basis because these people are so fucking ungrateful and honestly if i just got a simple thank you if i got a simple please i would feel a lot better that's just what it is it's the ungratitude of it all and it's like, if you guys actually just helped pack the boxes, we wouldn't be having these problems. So now, of course, my mom is still sitting here going off about, oh, niggas took her passport. And uh, my dad's talking about, oh, we threw out uh, his documents and we threw out his bags. It's a hot mess. Like, at this point, they're blaming me, saying I threw out food. I threw out this. I threw out that. I threw out shoes. And I'm like, I would never throw out anything that was good. So if you see something thrown out, either it was thrown out by accident it was thrown out because there was rats in it. It was thrown out because there was roaches in it. It was thrown out because it's beyond repair. Or realistically, um, quite frankly, I don't care it was thrown out because you guys should have helped. Like, you're not about to sit here and go off on me and, and make me feel bad for doing something when you did nothing. Like, that's what I need y'all to understand. Like, you didn't do anything. So, it doesn't make sense for y'all to be trying to go off on me. When you did absolutely nothing, it should make no sense. It's 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 the audacity for me. If I didn't do anything, you wouldn't even be here right now. Like it, it makes me mad. And their form of like I guess gratitude was just like, oh my god, where would we be without you? Like wow, thank God you did all of this. It wasn't a like a write out thank you. It wasn't a messy. It was just a wow thank god you did all of this eventually at the end of it all but it was like more of a poking fun like wow why don't you sit down why don't you take a break and it's like take a break if i took a break none of this shit would get done like what the fuck so then everything's kind of getting settled down or whatever clearly i'm still like not at ease about shit so now we get to the whole like end end we're really about to leave i actually eventually get back in the house after going off so now we're kind of going back to when I went off on my cousin because he thought this was a game because he had one job which was to clean and he went and left and um he came back I went off on him I went back in the house and um my dad had this microwave well we they had a microwave in the apartment and the microwave was riddled with roaches y'all like riddled like when you put food in the microwave you would see roaches just crawling all over the microwave and my mom told me she wanted to throw it out, which is a shock because my mom was adamant on keeping like everything. But she was like, yeah, we got to throw this out. My dad was like, no, 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 the microwave is fine. We're keeping the microwave. And I was like, okay, what about the coffee maker? Oh, the coffee maker's fine. We're keeping the coffee maker. And my mom told me the same thing about the coffee maker. She was like, oh, the coffee maker, it's no good. Every single time we go to make coffee, 
there's roaches in it. So now they start going back and forth about that. And I was like, I don't know what you guys want me to do. Like, I don't get it. So are we throwing it out or not? He's like, no, we're keeping it. There's nothing wrong with it. So as I said before, my dad was put in the other apartment. So at this point, we're like, that's the last bit of thing. Like everything is packed, everything is in the truck and we're just looking at the coffee maker and we're looking at the microwave. So I'm like, all right, what are we doing? What are we doing with these? And my mom's like, nah, we're throwing this out. We're like, literally, I haven't made coffee in years because I'm afraid. I don't even put food in the microwave because I don't want roaches going in my food. That's why I'm always making food on the stove and I warm up food on the stove because the microwave, it's disgusting. We're throwing it out. So I threw it out. I get to my parents' house like the next day because that night it was late. I went home. We finished moving at like 11 p.m. I think the movers came at like 2, 3. We finished moving at 11 p.m. The next day... I come, my dad's like, oh, so you guys threw out my coffee maker and my microwave? Oh, who are you talking to? I'm like, first of all, um, yeah, it was full of roaches. Oh, it worked perfectly fine. I said it was full of roaches, and I'm not about to have you guys bringing roaches into this household. It's just, it's not happening. It was perfectly fine. I'm like, it was full of roaches. And if I remember correctly, when I was living there, that was the same microwave that was constantly stopping. Like, that microwave, it was a cheap microwave, and it was like, if you guys know, you know about cheap microwaves. It'll be stopping, it'll be stalling, it'll be, it'll, it did have issues. I was surprised it was actually still running somewhat when I was there. And he was like, oh, it I don't want you to go buy a microwave that don't work. And there was nothing wrong with that microwave. I'm like, D are you listening to anything that I'm saying right now? And he's like, oh, I I nobody told you to touch it. I'm like, I'm going to buy you a new microwave. It's not that serious. I'm just going to buy a whole new microwave and a whole new coffee maker. It's, it's going to be better. It's going to be newer. It's not that serious. Well, you're probably going to buy a piece of junk that don't work. Now, understand, right? My dad <clears throat> consistently buys shit that breaks, okay? All the time. I remember this vividly. And on top of that, I don't think this needs more sugar. I think it needs more lemon. Uh, on top of that, he also has this habit of, like, buying shit and then, like, buying the same thing of, like, the same brand. Like, he'll buy this microwave and then buy the same brand of microwave that broke before. And then, buy like, so it's like, nigga, I'm not you. And even if I was, I at least I'm gonna get warranty and not keep spending money on the same thing. So it's just like, nigga, don't try me. So I went to Target, I bought this microwave. It's nicer, it's better, stainless steel. Still hasn't broke. I brought it with the new um, coffee maker. Coffee maker was like maybe $20. It was a nice little coffee maker, like really nice. I was like, shit, for $20? I don't even drink coffee, but I'll start drinking coffee for that. But I have a Keurig. My man got me the Keurig, it's really nice. So. I was gonna get them a Keurig, but I was like, they not even gonna know what to do with a fucking Keurig. So I got them a basic ass coffee maker. I, I I bring the coffee maker in, and he's like, "Oh, it, it's probably not even gonna work." I literally looked at him. I was like, "A thank you would be a better response." Straight up, I was like, "A thank you would be a better response." I didn't even set it up. I made my cousin set it up. I was like, "I'm not, I'm not dealing with this," cause like I can't. The ungratefulness, the entitlement. I I just can't. Like I, I was at my end's rope. I probably cried every single day from like the end of March to like the middle of April because my head started hurting. Shout out to my man because he bought me like a cake that said like you're appreciated because I just felt so unappreciated. I felt like shit. Cause I'm just like, how the fuck can you do so much for someone, for people that asked and they just shit all over you? I just can't. And the thing is, I never remember my parents being this toxic. Like, I remember I did a whole video on Trish's channel about toxic parents. And I was like, my parents weren't necessarily toxic. They were just irresponsible. And now that I've had to, like, literally deal with them and so in such close proximity on a daily basis now, for real, for real, I'm like, no, these are probably the toxic the most toxic people I've ever dealt with in my life. I don't know if it's because they've gotten older. I don't know if it's because I have to deal with them on a more close scale. But they are legitimately toxic. And it's like, I can't. I really can't like it's it's just the worst experience I've ever had to deal with and it makes me sad because it's like it's getting to a point where like I really don't want to deal with them anymore like and I really I hate to say it I really hate to say it because it's like this shit forced me back into therapy like I never really necessarily needed therapy for real for real you know but now I do you know before I didn't need it like before I just needed kind of like medication management and stuff but now I'm in like legitimate therapy and medication management. Like these niggas are stressing me to fuck out. So I believe that's the end of that now and it gets worse. Okay, so now we're going to be doing probably individual stories. 
Um, I'm probably gonna be doing the stories in the vlog format. Comment down below if you guys like the stories in the vlog format because if you don't like it, I'll stop it. I'll just do individual sit down stories like the one I did on my sister. Um, comment down below. I don't know which one do you guys like more. I'll probably do a poll on my community tab because I, I I like these and I don't see anyone really do these really. So I'm gonna see. Like, let me know. I feel like it gives you insight into my life and it, it just gives me something to do during the vlog instead of you guys just watching me walk around and do dumb shit. So. Let me know if you guys like these better. Let me know um, what you guys prefer, the, the vlog stories, or if you guys like to sit down. But it gets worse. Um, my mom ended up actually going off on me because I ended up setting boundaries with her. And now my dad's mad at me because I end up setting boundaries with him. Um, so, yeah, everybody's getting mad because now I'm setting boundaries, and that's fine. Because it's over. Like, I can't, like, I can't be feeling like this on a consistent basis. I just can't. So, it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. Um... Thank you guys for supporting me on this channel. Like, it really means a lot to me. So make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that. And I'm going to see y'all next time. Bye.